Hello everyone and welcome back. I am Duke Silver and today we have a Cursed King game for you. And uh, just before we get into it, uh, as of right now, I am uh, competing in Fall Champs over on the main Storybook Brawl channel. Um, I, I might be uh, streaming my perspective as well. It'll be with a 15 minute de delay and no, uh, no mic if I'm allowed to. Um, but yeah, so at the time of upload that's going on right now. So uh, just in case anyone is interested in that, that is happening. Uh, anyways, let's get into this. Okay, so we start off pretty good here. Um, we, we get two forbidden fruits super early here, but uh, but we get to fill our board with uh, mostly relevant units. We get three uh, three quest progress ticks on our our Cindy, nice and early here, and we're uh, we're winning combats left and right. Uh, we get a pair of mice in our 3.0 shop. Uh, I wasn't gonna. I, I, I'm I'm. Considering beauty's influencing one of these, just uh, putting putting a four extra toughness on a minotaur, I find is very good usually. But uh, we did roll to see if we could find something a little more relevant. But unfortunately, uh, we just get another beauty's influence, so we just fire it off. And here, both big book of spells and boiling beaker are very very good on Curse King. Big book just gives you way more options for uh, casting a spell every turn. And uh, but we're gonna go with the boiling beaker, which I think is just a slightly more powerful option in general. Oh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah. Now uh, we pick up a lucky as well, just for a little bit of econ value there. And we, uh, again, make short work of our 3.0 opponent here. All right, and we get uh, the, the discount on our, uh, on the mouse in the shop, which triples into a forking rod. So we've got forking rod boiling beaker right now, which is uh, absolutely fantastic and obviously puts us in a, an incredible position. Um, so we get a, get a bunch of stats onto our Ogre Princess here, and uh, I could just take the two treasure, but uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sell down. We're going to go, we're going to play down a unit, um, and we're going to take the Spellweaver first. Um, the uh, Forking Rod plus the Magic Research is going to be like basically the same amount of stats as this mouse. Um, so I think it's, I think it's fine to just cash it in for the spell. And it's going to give us a... Uh, I mean, obviously, in the stats going on to a ranged character is just uh, just way more relevant. So, so definitely, uh, I'm definitely fine with uh, with just trading in trading in the mouse for a bunch of stats on our spellweaver there. All right, we get to triple our minotaur, and going into four, I mean, we're gonna take a speculative dragon nest here. The other two are not appealing to me at all in this spot. Um, and on level four, like there's just a decent chance we're gonna be able to find dragons, especially if we find a feasting dragon. Um, fork um, boiling beakers is uh, is just gonna be really really good um, if we find that. All right, again, there's another there's a spell weaver in the shop. Um, I don't think we can we can't quite get to it this time. Um, so we're just gonna we're gonna cast the genie's wish and we're gonna lock the spell weaver pair though. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the genie's wish gives us a shrink spell and a kidnap. So we're gonna get we're gonna get a cut purse from uh, from Zippy here. Again, these uh, all these extra stats from the fork and boiling beaker allow us to just uh, just dominate these combats, and we get a d the lucky discount onto our spellweaver, which is um, just fantastic. Um, yeah, our, this lucky has been really good. It's been really putting the the discounts on the important characters, which is re always really nice. Normally, is not the case, so. Um, we could just uh, fork Toil and Trouble here, but I feel like I really just want to find something that actually targets one of my uh, characters. Um, those at the end, we could we could potentially just uh, just fire it off and gain some experience here. But I really just want to keep putting stats onto my board, I think. I was going to sell and just cast the end there, but uh, but yeah. Unfortunately, we don't find a targeted spell, so we just, we're just going to go with a double lightning bolt here. And uh, we're against an opponent that seems to have disconnected uh, pretty early in the game there. A little bit unfortunate. All right, we're going to take the lucky pair, of course. Uh, I was going to use the Feed the Kraken, but we don't have Crystal Ball, so that would just end our turn. And again, we want to keep putting stats onto our board if we can help it. Um, pretty happy to take a book there. All right, and then we find a Beauty's Influence, which we're going to put onto our... Uh, on horse spell weaver which is going to put a ton of stats and notably a lot of toughness which is uh not something we usually have on spell weavers so that's at a premium for sure
opponent has a decently sized animals board, but uh, our backline range is going to be a little bit too much for them to handle. All right, we got a friendly spirit because, of course, it's a it's a fantastic target for our uh, beaker stats. There's a TLK, but we don't really have any any characters worth TLKing. Also, we don't get any uh, any forking rod value out of it. So we're just going to jam the Blaze of Glory onto this uh, onto this friendly spirit, and then we're going to lock this triple. Uh, we're going into five, so yeah. In hindsight, er, uh, we decide we decide not to uh, not to lock it and just uh, just sell our, our bench for the uh, for the three triple. It could have been Crystal Ball, and if it was Crystal Ball, then we would want to find Aeon immediately. Um, but I mean, Treasure Map is uh, is also pretty good. And we get a discounted lance from our Lucky. Again, Lucky just uh, just really coming through and giving us the discount. And with the uh, the Queen's Grace in the shop, uh, we just get to fork that and put a ton of stats onto Lance, giving getting the, the level 5 treasure or level 7 treasure uh, this turn immediately, which is, uh, again, fantastic. Things are really just uh, things are really just falling into place at this point. Again, our giant backline is just going to be way too much for this opponent to handle. And we knock the Celestial Tiger out. Alright, so we have a choice between Fairy Queen's Wand, Magic Sword plus 100, or Mirror Mirror. And I think we're going to go with Mirror Mirror. Fairy Queen's Wand is the safe pick here. Putting a bunch of stats on our board would be nice. But the fact that, uh... Like, we've got a couple things that work well with Mirror Mirror. And we're, we're building into spells, so like... Um, speaking of building the spells, we do find a crystal ball there, which we're going to replace Beaker with. Um, but yeah, so if we can find Scions of the Storm, Scions work extremely well with uh, with Mirror Mirror. Since the ability is a, a static buff that's applied all the time, um, technically Storm King is a, or Scion of the Storm is a 0-0. Zero, zero. So when it comes back as a 1-1 one, one plane version, it's, it literally just comes back as plus one plus one bigger than it was um, when it died. Lance a lot less good with the mirror mirror, but but I mean this uh, monster book, this Cupid, and this friendly spirit are all pretty decent. I mean the the friendly spirit less less so. It's only a plus one plus one buff, but it's still it's still an extra stat that gets applied somewhere. All right, and we get an Aeon Slay, and win the combat. All right, so with this uh with with our one spell spell discount, we're gonna we're gonna be able to throw some stats around find another Aeon which is fantastic and yeah we're gonna we're gonna throw Medusa on the board Medusa is fantastic with uh with mirror mirror um because of course it's 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 small enough that it's gonna attack in and uh and die and then it's gonna uh resummon as a 1-1 one, one plane version which is still gonna have that ability which just shuts down anything on the opponent opposing side Just like we see there, the, the statue is big enough to uh, to kill the Medusa when it attacks. So Medusa is going to get another attack, creating two uh, pretty useless statues on their front line. Friendly Spirit put some stats on the uh, resummon Medusa, and yeah, we get a we get an Aeon, a couple Aeon slays there, and uh, we find a good boy immediately, which is uh, fantastic because of course. Mirror Mirror with Good Boy, as we all know, is very, very strong. And uh, and there's a Beauty's Influence. So the, the goal at this point is just to play uh, Good Boy Mirror Mirror. And we're going to try and Beauty's Influence all our mages here to try and uh, try and fit this comp together. Also, the Mixed Whistle on the uh, Minotaur went into a, uh, a Fairy Godmother, which is a mage. Maybe, maybe the first time that subtype has ever mattered uh, in the entire time that I've been playing. Or the entire time that that uh, that subtype has existed, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna cast a um, an evil twin on the good boy um, with mirror mirror. The uh, since the resummoned unit is a one one plane version, uh, when it gets resummoned, as we see here, it is gonna be good. So uh, so good boy does not care if it's evil um, when it comes to mirror mirror really.
All right, and we can see see the power of uh, Mirror Boy here, just putting tons tons and tons of stats on our board. All right, we need to win that fight and get get our Aeon Slays. We would really like to uh, we would really like to get this other Aeon good or triple this Aeon. Um, no, none of these none of these treasures I think are worth replacing what we have here. Um, I, mean, I skipped the Knighthood on the good boy before just because like we wanted to uh, we wanted to, to triple it and see if we got Wand of Weirding anyways. Also, Knighthood uh, takes up so much of our turn that uh, it feels like it's probably not worth it. Uh, we could have locked that Evil Twin, but I still wanted to see if we can cast a couple spells. Like the Evil Twin on the uh, on the Aeon would be really nice. We end with a Masquerade Ball and then lock another good boy. This, uh, this Zippy board is looking, uh, looking pretty sparse here. So uh, we're not gonna have too much trouble uh, handling that. We're gonna get both our Aeon Slays again. They finally just uh, just pop our good boy. All right, so we get to add another good boy to the board. Now we're just looking for targeted spells. We just wanna put as many stats as we can onto our board here. Unfortunately, we uh, we spent a good boy and a bunch of rolls. It's pretty, basically our whole turn, so we're just going to double smite here. And this opponent has is playing a, uh, a summoning portal pumpkin build, which is uh, definitely an interesting and kind of unorthodox build, so got to give them some respect for that. But unfortunately, uh, it looks like they're going to they're going to fall to the power of mirror boy, as many have done before. And many will in the future. All right, they get uh, they get a lot of damage reduction at the end there, but uh, we're definitely not in danger of losing that fight. All right, we find another good boy, and uh, because our good boy had a hard time uh, hard time uh, dying in the beginning of that fight, I think we're just gonna put some uh, some stats on the other good boys. We just don't wanna. We don't want to make our uh, our golden good boy too hard to kill, because uh, I mean, obviously we want the we want the stats that are that are in there. All right, we're gonna we're gonna feed the kraken on this lance. It would be nice to leave it as a kiss target, but I mean, I just kind of want to cast some spells. So opponent gives us the GG. I think I think they uh, they know the writings on the wall. We almost fed fed the kraken on the uh, non good Aeon, but. Decided I wanted to keep it. Just letting all their summons uh, run into our wall of good boys. They're uh, not doing it, not doing a ton of damage to them, so they finally managed to knock a couple, a couple off there and. Just refills the stats on our board. And yeah, that's going to be it. We got three good boys left standing even, and uh, and that's the victory. Some mirror, mirror, uh, boy mages. Um, kind of a bit of a hybrid comp. So this this was a uh, pretty fun one. Um, but yeah, so if you enjoyed this or found it educational at all, please, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel, and I really appreciate it. Um, again, I'm over on Twitch uh, battling it out in the Fall Champs, so uh, if you're interested in that, come go on over and uh, and check them out. It's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of very good Storybook Brawl players battling it out for uh, for a spot in the uh, top eight and uh, and for a spot at the at world the World Championships. Um, but yeah, with all that being said, uh, hope you have a have a good rest of your day, and uh, I will see you tomorrow.